talking about deep seek right now before we get to our first speaker on this just want to put that in context because they actually released uh, their um, uh, their model about a month ago called r1 early jan actually and in the last couple of days the app that deep seek has put out has been at the top of downloaded apps across the board the feedback coming in is that it's a superior product compared to open ai it's open source and of course made at a fraction of the cost so that's the combination which has made everyone sit up and take notice and no one better to explain that than webhav goel co-founder of Predic Predexion AI. I hope I've said that correctly, Vaibhav. Tell me if I haven't. But a very good morning to you, and thank you so much for speaking with us. I think for our viewers today, is the most important bit is to understand what exactly is happening. What is this deep seek, and why has it shaken everything up? Yeah, good morning, all. Good morning, Tamanna. Uh, I think th thanks for having me here uh, on this show. Yeah, deep seek. Deep seek for me is a, is a very, very vital moment in the, uh, the world of AI. I think uh, uh, it's one of the, uh, one of the very, uh, very different moment uh, uh, in, in the world of AI in all what is happening out there. So if you just look at, you know, uh, what happened after chat GPT. Chat GPT brought AI to consumers, okay. Chat GPT had a promise, you know, that AI, AI has such uh, power. It can deliver, it can, it can really work, okay. So the world was amazed. But what was not happening was, you know, that the cost and a lot of training times and, you know, uh, the entire development process was cumbersome, okay. So uh, it was looking to look like, you know, this chat GPT game and the uh, LLM game is uh, a big tech game. But now what is happening with DeepSeek is uh, a very small group of people from China, uh, there are undergraduates, okay, students, uh, who started working on building this LLM, which is DeepSeek has been able to build something like chat GPT or in some cases better than a model uh, than a chat GPT. It is a fraction of cost and with uh, nothing on time. Okay. So what it proves is that, you know, uh, and also the basic hypothesis, right, around how do you develop these models is being challenged now. So now can, can a small startup from India or from elsewhere, right, or with a, with a budget of, let's say, 5 million, 10 million, can really build it. I think that that answer uh, uh, or the, that question, right, is now being uh, ch challenged and uh, really looks like it's very feasible. Okay, now, so I think word is amazed. Word is just looking at what Deep Sing is doing. Uh, people all over the globe is trying uh, the Deep Sing app and the web version of it, and also the API version, and uh, they are really seeing the power of uh, of our it. Okay, so it's. It's actually uh, seeming to be a true product, okay, which is a game-changing one. Vaibhav, well, good morning, Neeraj here. Uh, just trying to understand, does this therefore make a large language model, a, services of a large language model, uh, does this have the power to make the services of a large language model a commoditized service? And if so, if, presuming that DeepSeek does have success and other, other language models also have success, or what are the implications? Because hitherto the belief was that chips will cost X, there will be X quantum of power required, X number of data centers required, uh, chips will only be supplied by a very few companies, etc. I think this appends that business model, right? Is that why, is that the reason why the markets have reacted, particularly the NASDAQ and, and NVIDIA, etc., have reacted the way they have? And, and to your mind, does it make it a commoditized service or has the power to make it a commoditized service? Yes, Neeraj, I think uh, very rightly said, okay. So I think what people are amazed, okay, and the business community specifically, right, uh, is about uh, can it really empower a small uh, startup, right, or a, uh, a bunch of researcher to build something like this with very, very, very minimal resources, uh, both on the GPU side as well as on the data side, and uh, build it very fast, okay. So I think uh, it just changes the game, right? It just changes the business model in AI world. It also says that, you know, uh, the cost of AI, of AI serving, right, an entire uh, 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 business fraternity. So the cost comes down drastically, which means it produces a very strong business case now. So AI, which was supposed to be very costly, uh, supposed to be driven by uh, US tech companies, now comes to the, uh, come and comes in the hands of uh, developers all over the world, okay, and then they start building uh, so variety of apps and uh, tools out there for a uh, large number of people. So I think definitely, Niraj, I think this is this will lead to commoditizing uh, uh, of AI services. And I think I would say this this will lead to commercialization of uh, AI in a very big way. Yeah. 
Weber, hi, Alex joining in as well. Uh, I'm curious to know about what you think about the disruption because ultimately this is disruption. Uh, you, I think a lot of these people who had models out, large language models, they were waiting for a day like yesterday where you had a significant disruption change the status quo and change the narrative. Uh, where does, in your opinion, the next disruption come from? Is it a further uh, it, you know, reducing the cost? Is it further reducing the learning time of these models? Yeah, Alex, okay, thanks. Uh, uh, I think further what we see is uh, uh, these LLMs, right? People, uh, when people have to use, people are using these LLMs inside their applications, there are concerns being raised, right? About accuracy of these models, hallucinations, and so many other things, okay? So what I see is going forward, uh, uh, as we go and productize these models, uh, these models will come better and better in terms of performance, overall quality, obviously the cost will come down and i think these uh, these these will become ready for the market okay so i think market forces will will now determine uh, uh, how these models will get adopted okay primarily yeah mm. okay webhav earlier in this conversation you raised a very important question about now that this chinese company has shown that it can be done that you can build this entire system at cheaper cost faster, better, superior, what can India do? And let me come to you on that, because you know we're speaking a short while before markets open, Indian IT stocks may, may not react at all. But the fact is, that is India even in this arms race? Where are we in this game right now? Yeah, uh, uh, India definitely uh, is doing a lot of work in AI uh, space. We have an India AI mission, uh, and a lot of work is happening. But definitely, uh, there was a theory that you know we were not really thinking about this building this foundation model so far okay so i think with this moment which has happened and with chinese counterparts doing something definitely uh, india mission will, will will become bigger and i think now indian companies startup government and everybody okay has to think fundamentally and i think we are at a point of uh, it, it's a cusp moment okay for, for all of us here even in startup world that we have to build something like this uh, it's not just one model or two models but I think uh, the very belief that we can build this, okay, so that will start happening in India, and I, I expect a lot of uh, lot of new announcements of projects, a lot of new funding to come up come up in Indian startup space uh, in coming days, okay, with this. Uh, Webab, thanks so much for giving us the context that you did. It's an important conversation to have at the start today, and uh, you know who knows, maybe soon you'll have an Indian large language model, and we'll be talking to you sooner than you know.